Hi, this is Janet Swanson, and you're listening to One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. Today, I just want to encourage you, inspire you, and give you a reason to keep going. As you're listening to this podcast, I pray that the Holy Spirit will open up your ears to hear Him, open up your eyes to see Him, and open up your heart to know Him. I pray that 2021 will find you flowing in the year of God's favor over your life. I pray that healing will come to your heart speedily, and I pray that this podcast will be a blessing to you. Welcome to One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to One Voice Makes a Difference. So glad you joined me today. We are on part five on how to tackle discouragement. And today I want to talk to you about how to tackle discouragement when you are grieving. I don't know about you, but I've been looking out around me, all around me, and I'm seeing people hurting. There's been so much death. There's been so much disappointment, so much sickness, and people are hiding in their grief. And like I told you before, if we don't tackle discouragement, it will lead you to a pit of despair. But I'm going to let you know also That when you are grieving about something and you don't understand it, you can find yourself in a pit and you can find yourself discouraged and you can find yourself asking all the wrong questions. So today, I want us to get some insight from the words of Jesus and about grief and grieving and what the Bible says about grieving. I have the privilege to teach and facilitate a class here in our church at Crossroads called Grief Share. And it's just a support group to help people that are grieving. And it's been like the best class I have ever attended, number one, but the most powerful class that I've ever taught because you get to see firsthand when the Lord says, I am near to the brokenhearted. You can see him and feel his presence and how close he is to those that are hurting. So today, I want to encourage you. I want you to know that if you are grieving or if you've been discouraged, the Lord is with you and he is helping you. He is really close to you right now. And if you're broken in any way of your life, grief is not just because someone has died that you love. But it's a loss of anything, you know, um, maybe a loss of your health, uh, maybe a loss of a relationship. Um, Maybe it's a bankruptcy or a loss of, you know, your finances, whatever it may be. I want you to know that Jesus recognizes our grief and our sorrow and the pain that we go through. You guys, I'm telling you, grief will sometimes take you down a road that you never intended to go down. You never saw yourself going down that road. And that's why I want us to tackle discouragement when you are grieving. And how are Christians supposed to grieve? Well, I was looking up and studying the scripture the other day, and I ran past a scripture where God grieved. And did you know that the Holy Spirit grieves? And, you know, I thought to myself, wow, how can God grieve when he already knows everything and he knows all the questions and all the whys, you know? Then I had my Hebrew Bible. I love my Hebrew Bible. And I looked up the definition in Hebrew of grieve. And this is what it said. To grieve, it means to hit a painful spot, causing a piercing sense of anguish. A place of wearisome pain, troubled within by something which takes a deep toil. A place of wearisome pain. So God can grieve like that. He has a piercing pain of anguish, a place of being troubled. You know, the Holy Spirit can feel deep, inner, piercing pain. Did you know that? Did you know that he can feel that? He feels your pain. He feels your grief. He feels your discouragement. And we see in Genesis 6 where God grieved. And we see in Ephesians 4 where the Holy Spirit can be grieved. 
And you guys, there are so many emotions in grief. And Jesus, he knew it all so well. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 5, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows. That word sorrows right there, it means pain, deep inner piercing. He was despised and rejected by man, a man of inner pain, inner piercing pain, acquainted. I mean, this is firsthand experience with grief. He was acquainted with grief. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took on our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, struck down and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, and iniquities is our inward pain. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. That's in the book of Isaiah. And I think it's so amazing how, you know, grief means an inner piercing, but Jesus experienced a physical piercing and he experienced an emotional piercing. That's so powerful. He bore emotional pain. He bore grief. And then we see in the Gospels, you know, Jesus bore all of our inner pain, the piercing pain. When he was dying, he felt and he took on all the disease and sickness from cancer to the coronavirus, you guys, all the diseases that has ever been or will ever be in the future. He took it all on. He bore all of our sickness, all of our pain, and he took on all of the sin of the world from the past, from the present and to the future. And he bore all of that when he died on the cross and he felt the pain of breakups. He felt the pain of divorce, of murder, of suicide, of death and grief. And he had a question when he bore all of this pain. He had one question and it was, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And sometimes during grief, we can ask the same question. And when we're discouraged, we'll say, why, God? Why are these things happening to me? Why did you, and you know, even sometimes we can go as far as saying, God, why did you take my loved one? See, grief is intense. It's chaotic. And sometimes it'll make you think that you're losing your mind. You know, grief is like the ocean. Sometimes, you know, the ocean is very unpredictable. Sometimes the ocean is crazy. It's chaotic. The waves are huge and they're crashing down on you. And sometimes it's, you know, got a medium tone to it where it's not really moving a whole lot, but you feel the waves of it, you know. Sometimes it's calm and sometimes you feel the severe undertow. And the one thing about an undertow, and I've learned this um, also, is that an undertow, when you fight it, it will take you even deeper. But if you give into it, it will bring you right back up into like a complete circle. So grief is like that. Sometimes you feel like it's taking you under. And if you fight it and you try to ignore it and you put a mask on it or you try to put a Band-Aid on it or you try to take drugs or alcohol or do anything to numb it, I'm telling you, it will take you deeper and deeper and deeper and you will feel like you're drowning in grief. But if you lean into that grief, it will eventually bring you right back up and it will bring you to a safe place. You know, that is the proper response to grief. Did you know that the Bible talks to us about grief? In 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13, it says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. 
So what Jesus is saying here, or what the word is saying, is that I don't want you to be informed. And I don't want you to think that just because you're a Christian, you're a believer, that you don't grieve. The Bible doesn't say that we don't grieve. But the Bible says that we we don't grieve like the world grieves. The world grieves because they have no hope. They think that death is final and that they'll never see their loved ones again. But as a believer, we believe and we grieve with hope because it's not final. It's just a, um, it's not, how do I want to say, it's like a temporary goodbye. I'll see you in a little while. I'm going to meet with you again. And that's how Christians grieve. We grieve with hope knowing that we'll see our loved ones again. You know, um, because of what Jesus did and how he died on the cross for us, we can grieve with hope. And this is exactly how we tackle discouragement when we are grieve. I want to talk to you about the week that led up to the crucifixion of Jesus, and we call it the Passion Week. And let's pay close attention to some of the things that Jesus said to his disciples after the, after the triumphal entry, what we call Palm Sunday. John 12 and 12, he made his triumphal entry, and the same people that would be crucifying him the next week were waving were waving um, palm branches and crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus fulfilled prophecy that said, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Then Jesus, after all of these things happened, Jesus began to talk to the disciples about some things that were coming up, some things that were about to happen. This is the week before his crucifixion. And he began to talk to them about his emotions. And look at this. This is what he said in John 12, verse 27 says this. Jesus says this. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. For this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then the Bible says a voice came from heaven saying, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. And this is very important that you understand this because the voice of the Lord, this is the voice that is making a difference. And it's the only voice that can make a difference in your life and change your life. And I'm, you guys, I am a witness firsthand of how the voice of God has changed my life. And that's what this podcast is all about, is about one voice makes a difference. And we need to tell somebody, we need to speak out and, and tell people about Jesus and how um, his voice can make a difference in our lives. And the Bible says in verse 32, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all peoples to myself. I love that verse. If I be lifted up, all men will be drawn unto me. And then it goes on to the famous verse that we, or the chapter in John 14, 14, where Jesus starts off with, let not your heart be troubled. And I remember my father growing up with this scripture. He always quoted this scripture. Let not your heart be troubled, for I go away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will receive you unto myself. For where I am, there you shall be also. And, you know, I love that. First of all, he starts off this scripture with, he was talking to them about the pain in their heart. He was recognizing the grief in their heart. And he was comforting them by telling them, listen, this is for your benefit. I am going to take everything and I'm going to turn it around for your good. What is about to happen is for your good. What I'm about to do is going to be for you. So don't let your heart be troubled. In other words, he's saying, hey, don't grieve. Uh, you know, I don't want you to um, carry this inner pain around because I have a promise for you. And that's the key. The promise was the promise of the Holy Spirit. 
He said, it's it's imperative that I go away. It is so important, he was saying, that I die and that I lay down my life for you because I have a promise for you. And he says, I am sending you the Holy Spirit, the helper. And what he was saying to them, you know, now I am with you. You know, I am with you. The Holy Spirit is with us. But if I go away, I'm going to dwell inside of you. I'm going to come inside of you and I'm going to live inside of you. You know, and he talks to them about how now the Holy Spirit, you know, is just with us. But he wants to dwell in us because he wants to speak to our inner heart, our inner emotions. And he wants us to know that the Holy Spirit is going to help us in times of trouble. You know, he he wants to counsel with you. He wants to remind you of the words of Jesus and what Jesus said. And he will remind you of hope. And he will remind you of the peace that he is giving you and that he is leaving with you. Let's read in John 14, um, verse 25 through uh, 27. He says, "These, These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, and I just want to sit right here for a moment and dwell on this. Jesus is so acquainted with our grief and our sorrow. He was already beginning to feel it the on the Passion Week. You know, he would leading up to his crucifixion, he was already starting to feel the trouble in the heart of the hearts. And in, in his own heart, he was, he was beginning to feel the pain of the things that were about to come. And the Bible says that he even sweated blood, you know, and he was going through so much grief and so much pain the night before his crucifixion. He was already starting to feel what he was about to go through. But the words that he spoke during the week to his disciples the week before, he was saying, listen, you guys, I get it. I feel it. I feel your pain. I know what you are going through. I'm not just someone on the outside saying, hey, everything's going to be okay. No, I'm telling you, I am on the inside of you. I feel your pain. I feel your trouble. I feel your grief. I feel the inner piercing. And I have a promise for you. I have promised I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you, but I'm going to be with you always. I'm going to be by your side and I'm going to be your help. I'm going to be a very present help in times of trouble. And again, he said, listen, you guys, here's the key. He says, I'm going to give you peace. And when you are, when, when you are discouraged, and you are loaded down with grief. There's there's no peace inside. There's turmoil going on inside. There's, there's conflict going on on the inside when you are discouraged. It means you have lost heart. It means that your heart is troubled. But Jesus is saying here, listen, you guys, I am going to give you peace. And it's going to cancel out your fear. And it's going to calm the waves of emotions that come to you when you are grieving or when you are hurting on the inside. He said, let not your heart be troubled nor be afraid, but I am leaving you with peace. I am giving this to you. This is a gift. And then when I go away, I am going to send the comforter. I am going to send the comforter. That can comfort you like no counselor can. And he will touch you. He will help you. He will touch you on the inside. He will help you. And he will will speak to the inner person, the inner grief that you carry. And little by little, he will show up every day. He will show up when your heart is broken. And he will give you peace and he will comfort you. I have seen it over and over and over again. I have experienced it 
over and over again where you guys, I'm telling you, God is truly a healer. He can heal our emotions. And I believe that discouragement is rooted in our thoughts and emotions and the things that we dwell on. And when we dwell on the negative and we dwell on everything that's been taken away from us, when we dwell on the things that we don't have instead of the things that we do have, it can lead us into a pit of despair. And, you know, it can lead us down a road that we never intended to go down. And you guys, I'm telling you, it is so easy to do. It is so easy to get stuck in that. But instead, can I tell you this? Pray about everything. Talk with the Lord about how you feel. Tell him what's going on on the inside. And, you know, receive the peace of God that passes all human understanding. And when you begin to pray and you begin to have a grateful heart and you grieve with hope, knowing that you're going to see your loved one again, you know, and I know that that seems so cliche, you know, like, oh, we're going to see them again. It doesn't negate the fact that you don't have them here with you on the earth. And that's re- that's one of the reasons why Jesus said, I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you a helper because you're going to need all of this help because you miss them so much. Or it doesn't um, negate the fact that you have a loss or maybe there's been a breakup or a financial loss. And the Lord says that he is working all things together for your good to those who love him. And I want you to know that the Bible talks about there are times that we can weep, you know, and you need to to understand that it's okay to grieve. It's okay to weep, but there's also a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and there's a time to dance. I want you to know that's in Ecclesiastes 3 and 4 and in Psalm 35 it says his anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for life. For weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And I want you to know that some of you have been asking this question. You've been grieving, you've been hurting, and you've been wondering, is this feeling going to last forever? This deep, piercing pain, is it going to last forever? And here's my answer for that. No, it's not going to last forever because we have a promise that the Holy Spirit is going to comfort you and he is going to help you. And there is a time to weep, but there is going to come a time that you will laugh again. Okay, there is a time to mourn, but there will come a time that you will dance again. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning time. You know, weeping endure endures for the night. When I think of that word endure, it means that you are going to feel the weight of it. You're going to be bent over with pain for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. And morning is when you wake up, my friend. You wake up in the morning time, and there's going to be a time where you're going to be, you're going to be, um, you know, the Lord is going to help you wake up from this deep inner piercing emotion of grief where you will laugh again and you will enjoy your life again. You know, it's a promise. This is the promise from Jesus, from the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I want you guys to know that, um, I, I understand what that feels like when I lost my mom and my dad and I lost my mom when I was 33 and I was pregnant with my third child. I lost my dad when I was 38 and there were so many emotions that flooded my soul and I had so many emotions of abandonment and, you know, um, just like a, a ball of emotions. It was just all tangled together But I am standing here as a witness to tell you that the Holy Spirit helped me. He helped me in my inner pain. He helped me in my grief. And he showed me some things in my grief that was in my heart that I didn't even know that was there. And he began to heal me of the pain of my past. I had been hanging on to a lot of grief and pain from my past. 
and the Lord took me down the journey of of healing, of turning my mourning into dancing and turning my weeping into joy. And I want you to know that God wants to do that for you today. I'm going to leave you with this scripture in Psalm 57, 1 through 3. It says, Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me. For my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. I will cry out to God Most High, to God who performs all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me. He reproaches the one who would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. So what this scripture is saying and the psalmist is saying here, he says, listen, I am grieving there's trouble all around me, and I have calamities. They're, they're all around me. There's so much trouble all around me. I have so many emotions of grief. He said, but in the shadow of your wings, Lord, I will make my refuge. I'm going to crawl up beside you, Lord, and I'm going to um, just lean in to you, Father, and let your arms hold me. And the psalmist said, I will cry out to you, God Most High, because you perform all things for me. God is performing all things for you right now. He is sending help from heaven and he is comforting you right now. How grief would want to swallow you up and discouragement would want to swallow you up. The Lord Jesus is having mercy upon you. And he is sending truth to you right now by telling you that, my friends, you don't grieve like the world, but you grieve with hope. You grieve with hope, knowing that Jesus is comforting you, that you'll see your loved ones again. And maybe, you know, you've lost other things. Maybe you didn't lose a loved one, but you're grieving over a relationship. I want you to know that God's going to enable you to love again. He can mend a broken hearted. Uh, he can mend a broken heart. He can mend a broken relationship. God can do anything. The word says that he is the God who performs all things for you. And he will do it even so for you right now. So I want us to end in this prayer as we are in Passion Week right now. And it's leading up to Easter Sunday. I want you to know that Jesus is speaking words of life over you right now. He is saying, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let grief take you down to a pit of despair. Don't let the undertow of grief and loss, you know, make you feel like you're drowning in all of your sorrow and drowning in all of your grief. The Lord is saying, lean into me. Come to me, all ye that are heavy and weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you peace, and I will give you comfort, and I will give you joy. I will mend your broken heart. I will put the broken pieces back together of your life. Maybe your heart has been shattered into a million pieces, and you don't think it could ever be put together again. But I want you to know that Jesus felt that pain. Pain. He felt that pain on the cross and he is saying to you right now, since I felt that pain, I bore that pain and now I'm coming to you to comfort you and to help you and I'm coming along your side to help you with everything that you need. Remember the word says again that in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. So if you feel like you're so weak that you can't you know, get up and you feel like you're so weak that you can't go on. I want you to know the word says to go in the strength that you have and God will walk before you and he will pave the way before you and he will make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord Jesus, I want to come to you right now and I want to pray for all of those that have a heavy heart, all of those that have been discouraged, Lord all of those that have been heavy laden, 
all of those that are grieving God and they have experienced a great loss. God, I pray, Lord, that you would send peace to them, that you would send hope to them. God, that you would comfort their heart and you would send healing to their emotions, healing to their mind, God. Help them, Holy Spirit, to take all those negative thoughts and to to capture them, Lord, and to make them come into obedience to your word and to think, God, on the hope that you have given them and to think on the words that you have spoken over their life. I pray, God, that you would strengthen their mind and you would strengthen their heart and strengthen their spirit right now, Father. Father, for your word says that in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. And I pray, God, that they could take on the strength of the Holy Spirit right now. I speak healing over their mind and healing over their heart and healing over their emotions, God. I pray, God, for that person that's been troubled, God, and they don't know what to do, and maybe they're trying to make decisions and they feel troubled about something. God, I pray, Lord, that you would come along their side, Lord, and you would um, just give them answers, Lord, that you would help them and you would show them what to do and they don't know what to do. And as they cry out to you, Lord, and they lean into you, I I pray, God, that you would lift them up out of the the pit of despair and that you would encourage them, God, with your spirit, with your Holy Spirit, and that they would learn, God, to lean into you and learn to trust you, God, that you are at work. You are at work, God, and you are working behind the scenes. And God, you have a plan. You know what you are doing. And when life doesn't make sense and we are asking so many questions, why, why, God, I pray, Lord, that you would um, begin to comfort them in the middle of all of the questions of why, God, are these things happening to me, and that they would begin to, to ask the right questions, Lord, and begin to lean in to your answers, Lord, that you are working, God, behind the scenes. You are working all things together for our good, and I thank you, Lord, that you take what the enemy meant for harm, and you turn it around for the good, and you will make the devil regret the day he ever laid hands upon on their heart, God. I thank you for that. I thank you for restoration. I thank you for restoring finances and restoring relationships. I thank you that all of your promises are yes and amen. And I thank you, God, for 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 fulfilling all of your promises in them and in their families, God, that you will do what you said that you would do. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to seal every word that has been spoken and prayed over in their hearts, in their soul, and in their mind, that no devil in hell can steal away this peace that you are giving them right now in the most precious name of Jesus. Lord, I ask this in your name. I ask, God, that you give them all peace right now, that you would restore their hope, and that you would restore everything that the enemy has stolen in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pray that you be blessed this week. I want you guys to know that I love you. I look forward to being with you every week. And, um, you know, always remember the voice of the Lord is powerful and strong. And if you take a moment and listen, you will hear him speak to you and it will change your life and it will make a difference in your life. I love you guys. You have a blessed week. Bye. Thank you for listening to One Voice Makes a Difference. It is our prayer that through this episode, God has given you a new hope and inspiration to come out of darkness, break the silence, and tell somebody so His light and healing power may begin working in you. If you would like to connect with Janet, visit her website at janetswanson.org. Finally, and most importantly, if you are currently in crisis, please call the 24-7 Crisis Hotline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Don't hesitate. Your voice and your life matters.